everyone, I thought I would do a video today on Sheldon's new enclosure. So if you want to see her old enclosure I'll leave a link in the description bar. Um, this one's much bigger and my friend made it for me. I'll leave a link to his website in the description as well. Um, he does sort of have a carpentry business and he did make this for me out of scraps that we had lying around. So I'll show you what he's done. Ta-da! <laughs> so this is Sheldon's new enclosure. It's probably about three times the size. Before this, she was in a two foot by four foot tortoise table, which is the recommended minimum for hatchlings. But she's of course got a bit bigger now and she's just outgrown the enclosure really. We were looking to do something for ages. And um, now finally we find someone who can build it for us because our DIY skills are not that good. So here's Sheldon, I'll give you a little tour. I'm going to have to measure it and leave the measurements in the description bar as well because I'm not actually sure what size this is. So there's Sheldon, she's got a big feeding slate in the corner. This um, slate we actually salvaged, there's a there's some building works going on opposite us. Um, so there was a big skip outside and this was in it and I thought it was the perfect size for a feeding slate for her. Her old one was a bit too small and the idea with this is basically you're not putting their food straight on the um, substrate or if it's in their bowl they tend to just pull it out and then get it mucky straight away because then they end up ingesting quite a lot of substrate which obviously isn't good for them long term it can sort of cause blockages and stuff but so that's why that's there. The substrate she's on is a mixture of topsoil and play sand which I've done a video on substrates, which I'll leave in the description bar as well. It'll just be on my whole sort of tortoise section. Um, but yeah, that's the safest and cheapest and most natural bedding that I've found for her. So over here, she's got a little, these are just some bendable log bridges, which I bought for the hamsters, but never ended up using. And of course, we don't have any hamsters at the moment. And it just makes a little divider. It's quite good if you can sort of break up their table with lots of different things it sort of prevents boredom if they can see straight across the enclosure they tend to get a little bit um, stressed out and they try and sort of climb out and if you just break it up it makes them think that it's not such a small space that they're being kept in and they're generally a lot happier I find and then there's some pebbles here which just creates a different texture a different surface for her to walk on Obviously all these scratchy sort of surfaces are going to help keep her nails from becoming overgrown because sort of in the wild they would scratch them down, they would walk a lot more in the wild and they would keep them short so you shouldn't really need to cut your tortoise's nails, they should just sort of keep them down from all the stomping around they do. So then over here is her water bowl which is a bit small now, she's sort of outgrown this one as well. I really struggle to find reptile water bowls that are big enough. I'm keeping an eye out in charity shops to see if I can find anything. Just a pretty shallow dish that I can put her water in. So over here she's got a log bridge which is plenty big enough for her. She's got a little artificial cactus which she doesn't try and eat. I've had people say before that you shouldn't put in artificial plants. I haven't found this as a problem with Sheldon but of course if she started to eat it I would take it out. Um, she's also got a cuttlefish, which I don't know why is up there. But this provides a source of calcium for them, and it also, when they sort of bite on it, it helps to keep their beak from becoming overgrown. So over in this corner, she's got a little rock, which she likes climbing on with, again, some artificial plants. It just sort of creates um, more excitement in her enclosure, really. It's another surface, another texture, and she loves climbing up over this. She's got some more little bendable log bridge is under there. And that's sort of her cooler, cooler area. And then obviously she's got her basking area over here. So she has got the option to have two lamps, but because it's um, still quite warm weather here, we don't need a second light. This provides sort of the right temperature for her, which I'm testing there at the moment because she's moved into a new house obviously I want to check that the temperatures are set up right 
but the bulb I use is the Arcadia D3 bulb which is a sort of mercury vapour combined bulb so it provides both heat and UV as well although because she's got a bigger enclosure now I will have to look into potentially getting a strip UV bulb just so the UV is covered in more of an area than it is at the moment but yeah that's just on a clamp lamp there I got my friend to attach this so we can hang lights and stuff off it which is obviously essential with owning tortoises and then over there behind her ramp she's just got some more artificial plants which makes it look a bit more natural for her so her enclosure is on wheels which is amazing because it's such a heavy enclosure so I can literally just wheel it around <laughs> Um, it does hold a lot of weight as well. My friend actually climbed into it and we were pushing him round in it. So it definitely is strong enough to support the weight of... It. There's quite a lot of bedding in there. It's a lot... I think it's about three bags of topsoil. So there is a lot of weight in there. But he put in these slats which help to support it. I forgot to mention as well that I have one of these um, hydrometer. I have no idea how you say that, but it just measures the humidity in the enclosure. At the moment it is a bit humid, that's partly because today is a really muggy day and it's also partly because her bedding wasn't completely dried out when I put it in her enclosure, so it will dry out a bit over the next couple of days. But this is really useful <laughs> for knowing just what sort of humidity it's at and so you can alter that according to the species that you've got. Obviously Sheldon is a Mediterranean species so you want it to be sort of moderate, which um, a moderate to dry really. <laughs> She's just having a munch over there. But yeah, that will dry out over the next couple of days and it's something that I can monitor to keep an eye on. <laughs> so that is pretty much the bottom level. I will need to measure it like I said, but I'm guessing it's probably about six foot long, something like that. But you can see Sheldon over there, it's, it's a pretty good size for her really, I think she's done very well. She's only a small species of tortoise, so she won't grow to be much bigger. I think sort of about 8 inches is max for um, Hermans. So there she's just got her ramp, which is removable, which is going to be really useful for cleaning. Um, we've done it at a really shallow angle, so obviously she doesn't have to scale a mountain to get up there. And we've got these little sides on as well to stop her wandering off the side. Or she does tend to like climbing up stuff and sort of sliding off. So <laughs> I didn't want her doing that on her ramp and then ending up on her back underneath the basking lamp. So there's that. And then here's her top level, which I haven't found anything to do with at the moment. So I've just done it with some quite deep substrates so it can be like a, a burrowing area. Her substrate's probably a couple of inches deep everywhere already, but this is a bit deeper. She's not a huge digger. If she was, I think I would have a lot um, deeper substrate. But she really doesn't dig. She makes little scrapes, but she doesn't. She's not a digger. So I don't know if you remember when we brought Tommy home. We temporarily looked after a tortoise called Tommy, who had been quite badly mistreated. Um, this bit up here was actually the enclosure that he was living in when we took him on. Which, as you can see, in comparison to my hand, is not big enough for an adult horse field tortoise to be living in. So what we've done here is just cut out a little hole with the jigsaw and put in that ramp. Just need to stick up my little sign there. So there we go, that's Sheldon's new enclosure. I'm really, really excited about this. <laughs> so obviously that was reclaimed from Tommy. And there's loads of bits of wood. This was from a company nearby that fits kitchens. 
and these were some offcuts that they weren't using so they gave to us for free so so happy with this so it cost basically nothing <laughs> which is amazing and she's so happy she's been a lot more active since she's had a bigger space as well I think she was just becoming really bored of her old enclosure so she was pretty much just sort of eating, sleeping not really doing a huge amount but she's a lot happier stomping around in here as you can tell she also likes sitting on her ramp under her lamp which is at a safe temperature as well we've sort of got the higher range temperature on the ramp and then yeah so there we go she's just having some what's she eating there she's got some plantain uh, a couple of dandelion leaves and some grasses as well so she's happily munching away on them. I do have a diet video as well, which again, I will link in the description bar. So yeah, for those of you that are new to my channel, Sheldon is a six-year-old Herman tortoise. She was hatched in 2010. <laughs> um, she doesn't always have this much food as well. I did have some comments of concern on my channel quite recently about how much I was feeding her but this is um she doesn't always have this much food do you munch Kim <laughs> so yeah her shell isn't completely flat when we got her she was already I think three years old and she'd been fed on basically just kale so obviously she did grow quite rapidly and um, that's why her shell is never going to be completely flat because of that rapid growth at a young age but her growth slowed down now to a more normal rate but yeah she'll always be a little bit bumpy which um, it's rare that you actually find tortoises in captivity with completely flat shells isn't it? <laughs> But yeah, I've also got a video on that as well, which again, I'll link down below, about um, sort of metabolic bone disease in tortoises, which goes into pyramiding a little bit, and the dangers of sort of high protein, low fibre diets. But yeah, I think that's about it. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys soon. Bye!